Hello, welcome to HEART, the role of arts in healthcare and healing. The objectives for today are to be able to name at least two ways that using art can improve patient outcomes and to discuss how incorporating the arts can be used by all providers. Let's begin by thinking about some simple terminology. Is there a difference between healing and curing? Have you ever thought how you would define healing versus curing? Have you ever thought what our patients mean when they say, I want to be cured or I want to be healed? Healing through the arts defined curing as what healthcare achieves through medication, treatment, and other interventions in order to make a disease or a disease process disappear, to eradicate the disease process. Healing, on the other hand, is defined as an internal process where the goal is to get the body in balance. Healing does not necessarily involve curing. There's been a debate that's been going on since the beginning of medicine. Is medicine an art? Is it a science? Or is it both? We know that the arts have been successfully used with behavioral health patients as well as pediatric patients. Why are we so reluctant to introduce it into other arenas of healthcare? We have all the excuses, it takes too long, we have patients to take care of, we've got the new electronic medical record. But really, as with any other item we've introduced, once you get used to it, it's no more time consuming and the benefits to not only the patient, but to the staff are phenomenal. Science is usually defined as technology, medication, research, clinical trials. In other words, most people associate the term science with fact. Art, on the other hand, draws images, no pun intending, of music, drawing, storytelling, and feelings. Some would argue that medicine today is too much science and is a lost art form. That is the stance that we are exploring today. Let's look further. Healing through the arts identified eight expressive types of art forms. The first one is joy. If the person doesn't have joy, then no other art forms can occur and the process of healing cannot begin. Visual arts, typically this is how artists themselves deal with their own healthcare challenges. Music, music allows us to have hope. It raises our spirits and it has no language barrier. Every culture has music in its culture and that music has meaning and therefore music can be used to help heal as well. We hear often, look at nature, find the beauty in nature. Finding the beauty in nature can help us find the beauty in life and can certainly help us on our road to being healed. Photography. We've all heard that saying, a picture speaks a thousand words. Why is that? We can capture an image that can help a patient heal whether that image is with a camera or that image is through them drawing a picture or the staff working with them to draw a picture. Poetry, not often used, but for those who do use it, they find that this shows a snapshot of their life. If the patient uses poetry to express his or her life, then it can help others around them understand where that patient is in his or her life, what they're feeling, what they're thinking, what they're afraid of. Harmony. Those that are in harmony are said to be at peace. And once you're in harmony and at peace, you can have better outcomes and you can better enjoy your road to healing. And then health, we use this word all the time. 
But has anyone ever stopped to say, what does health mean to me? How would I define health? How do our patients define health? How frequently do we go into our patient's room and say, could you tell me when you think of health, what that means to you today? Or could you draw a picture of what health means to you? Think about how we could use that to help our patients and to improve outcomes. Art allows the patient to portray their pain, their stress, their anxiety. It can help them in their journey to healing with acceptance of the diagnosis and or the disease process. It can create a bond, a strong bond between the patient and the providers. Help to engage the family into the patient's journey. It can even help restore what was. It may even restore a better existence because the patient, the family, and the providers have a deeper understanding of what is truly going on. Not only physically, but also spiritually and mentally. Let's look at some of the artwork and talk about their artists. Margaret Munns Loesch is an artist that a colleague and I had the opportunity to interview last year. She is a self-taught artist who is a delight to talk to. She's intrigued by nature and patterns. She likes to compare the ugly and the beautiful. And according to her, no matter how ugly something is, there's always beauty to be found within. She's also very interested in the human spirit and how people react. Here's a picture of one of her artworks. It's called Infinite and Infinitesimal. Look at this picture and write down your visceral thoughts when you see this. Do you see sadness? Do you see hope? Confusion? This piece is actually a reflection of a child that was diagnosed with cancer. And this was Margaret's way of drawing a picture that she wanted to demonstrate the child's eyes were wide. They were shining and sparkling and full of hope despite the diagnosis. The pictures of the cells that you see around demonstrate or reflect the cancer that is going on in this child's life. Again, knowing that Margaret likes to bring beauty into all of the things that are ugly, such as childhood cancer, this was her way of demonstrating this little child's struggle and journey with cancer and all of the hope that exists in this young one's face. Margaret shared with us that she perceives all of life as vivid and a wild ride fraught with equal measures of love, sorrow, and wonder, all completely connected in an unspeakably beautiful universe of chaos. As we think about that statement for a second and think about what our patients are confronted with on a daily basis, think about what we are confronted with on a daily basis, wouldn't it just make sense to incorporate the arts into our lives as well as our patients' lives to assist them on their journey to the best of our abilities? We also had the opportunity to interview Philip Carey and to continue to work with Philip on an ongoing basis. Philip is an artist, educated as an artist, and has over 35 years of experience. He was introduced into healthcare, however, and started developing work for healthcare due to his wife and his own battles. Philip's wife, who passed away several years ago, was initially diagnosed with breast cancer. He himself was diagnosed with cancer. He had to go on dialysis, then he got put on a transplant list, he was waiting for a new kidney, He's been in and out of hospitals multiple times, not only for himself, but also for his wife when she was alive. 
And that is, this is what got Philip started in his work with healthcare and the arts. Take a look at this picture drawn by Philip Carey. What does it say to you? This is a special piece to me because Philip created this for Kudamach and Associates for us to share with healthcare workers as his way of saying thank you to all the caretakers that helped to keep him alive. I'm happy to say that Philip received a transplant and he is healthy and doing beautiful. As you look around the edges of this piece of artwork, you would see all of the dis different disciplines that participated in Philip's care. Think about taking some of these pictures or pictures that you find and showing them to your staff, asking them for their thoughts to get them thinking about how to include art in healthcare. Think about taking different pictures to your patients and sharing the stories behind the artwork with them, asking them what their thoughts are, asking them in what ways do you relate to this picture. Here's another very famous picture drawn by Philip Carey. It's called Art in My Veins. Take five seconds to look at this picture. What do you see? Who do you see? How are you left feeling? This artwork, it was actually created by Philip, who used pieces that were left over after his dialysis treatment. So if you were to see this artwork in real life, which I had the opportunity to do, you would see real tubing, real gauze, real butterflies, even copies of orders that the physicians had written that had been copied and taken out and placed on various places in the artwork. You may even notice those famous yellow socks on Philip's feet in this poster. Philip wanted those because he said that everywhere he went, he got talked to about falls and not being a fall risk and how he could keep himself safe. So those yellow socks, as we know, are important to us but they really can be important to the patient also. Philip also did some other work. He said he thought a lot while he was getting his dialysis treatments and he had patients, other patients who were receiving dialysis asked him questions, asked what he was working on today, what he was up to. After he made his big piece that we just looked at, Art in My Veins, he started to create bandage faces. And what Philip said is, at night after his kidney dialysis, he would have dreams that these eyes would speak to him and they would come to him with attitude. And he felt like he needed to enhance the face that he saw to make them have more personalities and more importantly, to help people understand that these faces were reflective of how he felt that he was seen by himself and others while he was receiving dialysis. So this one and this were distorted images of his moods, his pain, and his feelings during the dialysis process. When you look at these pictures, what are the first things that you notice? What catches your eye? What could you take out of this picture and use with your patients to help them on their journey to healing? We also had the opportunity to collaborate with one of our clients, Ellis Hospital. Ellis is truly a visionary hospital. They were concerned about adolescent restraint usage. They were concerned about the amount of use. They wanted something that would be able to de-escalate the kids on the unit, something that the kids could have to call their own. So they interviewed patients about their thoughts on art, 
and specifically about the use of art in the seclusion room. And then they collaborated with local artists. Does this room look familiar? I'm sure it does to those of you in behavioral health. These are, unfortunately, what typical restraint and seclusion rooms look like. As you look at this, is there anything in here that you can point out as being healing? Is there anything in this room that would help you or anyone else to be able to de-escalate or to deal with your current issues? I'm pretty sure that most of you said no. But let's turn that thinking upside down and let's look at what Ellis did and let's look at this very differently. What if you were taken to this room? This is what the restraint seclusion room at Ellis Hospital now looks like. Did you feel calmer just by looking at this picture? Did you feel distracted? Did you feel yourself start to de-escalate? Or did you feel yourself start to get lost in looking at all that was going on? Well, that is exactly what happens with the patients. Many times, according to staff at Ellis, the patients will send themselves to this room, and this room has been proven to help patients de-escalate. It's been shown, although they didn't have actual statistics, but the rate of seclusion and restraint has gone down since painting the seclusion room to look like this. Many times they can take a child who is beginning to escalate to this room and distract them by saying, can you find the pink flowers? Can you find the graffiti? Can you find where the cat is sitting in the ledge? What an awesome way to incorporate art into healthcare. And now that Ellis has incorporated this into their adolescent unit, they are looking at incorporating art into other units, such as in geriatrics. This again is an example of many times how we incorporate art into the behavioral health arena, but really looking at this and how we can incorporate the arts into other arenas to help our patients in their journey to either healing or cure so that we can best understand what's going on with them, we can help them to understand, and we can engage the family in that process. We know from research that's been done in pediatrics and in behavioral health that art brings many benefits. It empowers the patient to express their personal story. It assists them with acceptance, it connects the bad with the good or the ugly with the beautiful, as Margaret Munz Loesch said. It can help improve communication between the patient and the providers. It provides an outlet. We know that it can provide distraction just as the artwork in the seclusion room did with adolescents. It can enhance, enhance both physical and mental aspects of healing. Part of what we're expected to do as healthcare providers per the Joint Commission is to make sure that we address spiritual needs, that we address cultural needs, that we are assessing that person as a whole, not as a diagnosis. And wouldn't art be a great form of being able to assist that patient as a whole with their spiritual, physical, and mental needs? It can bond the patient with not only their healthcare team, but family. And art can provide a vehicle for your organization to connect with the community. There's a lot of research out there for those of you that are more based in the science field. More and more research has been done. There's literally thousands of articles that will give us statistics showing that incorporating arts into other arenas in healthcare, such as oncology, geriatrics, med surge units, can reduce lengths of stay, can provide distraction, can reduce the need for pain medications, and can reduce the recovery time after surgery. That's what it does for our patients. But guess what? Some of those same benefits are also shown in the staff. In those research articles, 
it has been shown that when staff use arts to help patients, their anxiety level is decreased, their stress levels are decreased, they felt more connected to the patient, to their role in the hospital, there was less turnover in the organization, and there were less work days missed. So all in all, we have patients who are having better outcomes and staff who feel better about what they're doing because of their connection with the patient and their increased satisfaction. And when I say staff, I'm talking about everybody, not just nursing. Think about how physicians, respiratory therapy, PT, OT, nursing, everybody can use the arts in various forms to connect with your patient. While this isn't based on research, we did want to share the following with you because we were so touched by this. After seeing Philip's artwork and hearing about his story, Philip was notified by the museum that four viewers of his artwork donated a kidney to total strangers. They felt so moved by Philip's story and his artwork that they donated a kidney to save someone's life. Wow, how impacting is art? That speaks volumes on what we really have the potential to change in healthcare by using a not so new vehicle. We'd also like to share with you that drawing that I showed you earlier that Philip created for Kudamachan Associates, we gave out as a gift at a conference at IHI. We noticed that there was a gentleman who kept coming back to our booth. Eventually he came over when it was just myself and my colleague. And what he said to us was, I'm on a waiting list right now and I had just about lost hope. After seeing your artwork and reading Philip's story, I came back to say thank you. I have hope again. These are two success stories, but I am sure there are thousands of success success stories that we may never even know about, but that occur every day through the use of the arts. Ways that we have impacted our patients for the good. What are the next steps? We hope that we've encouraged you to think about incorporating arts into your organization. Many times we think about arts and we think, oh, that's that behavioral health stuff that they do, instead of giving it the credibility that it deserves. Many times in healthcare, I wonder why we're so reluctant to bring in new things, to try new ideas. As I said earlier, we have lots of excuses, but no real good reasons as to why we can't do this, especially when the benefits are so far reaching. How can you incorporate arts to improve patient and satisfaction in your organization? Turn that old school thinking upside down. Ask what barriers exist and then eliminate those barriers. When we talk about bringing art into your organization, we're not talking about becoming artists or musicians. You don't have to be gifted. It's as simple as giving someone a blank piece of paper and some crayons. Taking five minutes in your day to sit down with that patient and say, and let's draw a picture about what we're feeling right now. Collaborate with behavioral health colleagues. Ask them what they do, if they can help you get art started in your unit or in your organization. Do your research. As I said, there's numerous research articles out there that have analyzed the impact and effect, effect, efficacy, excuse me, of arts in the healthcare context. One of those especially that I'd like to speak about is the University of Florida, which has a Center for Arts and Medicine. 
And this is dedicated to the academic research and study of art within the healthcare context. Here are some ways that you can begin to incorporate arts in your organization for your patients and for your staff. Look at artists in residence programs. Think about community art organizations in school within your area and how you can connect and collaborate with them. Do you know an artist? Would they be willing to come and do a mural? Would they be willing to come and paint a patient room, a restraint seclusion room for you? Invite artists to come and spend time with your patients, with families, with staff. As we look back, how can we turn medicine back into an art? Here are some keys for success. Create a team of interested staff. Conduct a needs assessment. What do you need to get started in your organization? You don't have to build Rome overnight. Start small. Start a pilot with one unit, maybe two, and build it from there and build on all those successes. Trust me, one change in one area will lead to many changes in other areas. Just look at the effect that it had at Ellis Hospital. They painted one room in one area, and now that's spreading to other areas in the organization. Perform pre and post assessments with your staff and your patients. What were their thoughts and feelings about the unit before the art? And what are their thoughts and feelings and their satisfaction after introducing art into the workplace? Sean McNiff said, art heals by accepting the pain and then doing something with it. Here's a list of references for this presentation. On our website, we will provide you with additional references. And certainly, we would be happy to talk further with anyone who is interested in bringing arts into their organization in order to improve patient outcomes and staff satisfaction. Thank you all for your time and attention. We certainly hope that this has been useful and that you will put this to good use. We'd love to hear from you for those of you that do incorporate arts into your healthcare systems. We'd love to know what you're doing. So please contact us if you do. Thank you so much. Have a great day.